I want to turn you this morning to a text that the Lord burned in my heart early on in the week. It was something that He weighed heavy upon my own heart. And the more I thought about it and the more I turned to it, the more I believe it to be the Lord's message for, this, for us this morning. You'll find my text this morning in the Old Testament book of Esther. And we are in Esther chapter 2. You come to the book of Psalms right there in the heart of the Bible. Move back, we come to the book of Job. And then we move back, we come to the book of Esther. Now, I'm just going to read my text this morning. I'm not going to read the chapter, but I want to read the text because I'm sure you're well, you're well read in that opening uh, chapter of Esther, and we know what happened. But my text is Esther chapter 2, and my text is verse number 17, the book of Esther, and we're in verse chapter 2, verse 17. And the king loved Esther above all the women, and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins so that he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. Now let me read the text again and let's get the picture into our minds. And the king loved Esther above all the women, and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins, so that he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. And we know that the Lord will add the blessing, his own divine blessing, upon the reading of that text this morning. As I thought about that text and as I considered that text, a wee unique thought the Lord happened to just give me at that moment was that if Esther would have been given the book of Proverbs that we find in our Bible, wonder what verses she would have underlined, what verses in the book of Proverbs she would have highlighted that would have related to her experience. I think she would underline Proverbs chapter 3 and verses 3 and 4. Because Proverbs chapter 3, verse 3 and 4 has this to say. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. And thou shalt obtain favor and good understanding in the sight of God and of man. Now I think Esther would have highlighted that verse this morning. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck, write them on the table of thine heart. Then thou shalt obtain favor and good understanding before God and of man. I think this morning she would have underlined Proverbs 12 and 2. Because Proverbs 12 and 2 says... A good man obtaineth favor of the Lord. If anybody ever could have learned that text, it was Esther this morning. 
I think she would have underlined, definitely would have underlined Proverbs 14 and 9. Do you know what four, Proverbs 14 and 9 says? Fools, it says, fools. Fools make a mock at sin. Do you know what it means when it says fools make a mock at sin? It means this people who can sin and think they're going to get away with it. If people think they can sin in the face of God and get away with it, they're not only fools. Fools, it says. Fools make a mock at sin. But among the righteous, but among the righteous, there is, there is favor, favor. And boys, I would say she could have underlined that verse because I'll tell you, where it says fools make a mock at sin, I'm telling you, I think Haman would have been in her thoughts when she would have read that. And then when she would have read the last part of that verse, but among the righteous there is favor, she would have placed herself there in Mordecai. And then I think she would have underlined Proverbs 14 and 35, a king's favor is towards a wise servant. I'm sure this morning that you have linked, you have saw the link in each of those verses. And that word, one word that links each of those four verses this morning is the word favor. Did you notice the text this morning that I read in your present? Look at it again. It says in chapter 2, verse 17, And the king loved Esther above all the women, and she obtained grace and favor in his sight. Now, let me tell you what that text doesn't say. That text this morning does not say she found favor. It doesn't say in that text this morning that Esther found grace and favor in the sight of the king. It says that she obtained it. She obtained grace. She obtained favor in the sight of the king. Do you know what that teaches me this morning? The favor that she obtained did not come naturally. It was something she had to work towards. It was something she had to choose to live for. She didn't find favor in the sight of the king. The text this morning says that she obtained favor of the king. We as believers this morning in the Lord Jesus, you and I have experienced the grace of God. It's, of course, it is the grace of God that has saved us. For by grace are you saved. And not only have we experienced saving grace, but every day we're, exper we're experiencing sustaining grace. You know, it's not just the grace of God that put you on the road to heaven, but it's the grace of God that keeps us on the road to heaven. And we have experienced this morning not only the grace of God, but you know we have experienced the mercies of God. It is of the Lord's mercies, dear, that we have not been consumed. Does the book of Lamentations not teach us this morning that His mercies are, they are new every morning? Of course they are. But here's the soul-searching question I was pierced with, and it's this. Even though I ex have experienced and do experience the grace of God, even though I have experienced and still experience the mercy of God, 
but do I experience and do I enjoy the favor of God? Oh, friend, the favor of God. And you know, friends, the title of this message that the Lord has enlightened me through our text this morning is this. It's all about obtaining God's favor. It's obtaining the favor of God for ourselves. And you know, child of God this morning, just like Esther, it's not something that just comes naturally. It's something that we have to earn this morning, favor with God. It's something that we have to strive for, work for, the favor of God. Favor is like respect. It must be earned. It can't be demanded. Too many people demand respect. My father used to always thump that into me. Son, no matter what position you hold in life, always seek to earn respect, never you demand. He just went up. In his career as the, in the police, he said this, Every young police officer should learn to earn the respect of the community from which he, he serves. He should never demand. He used to tell me the great problem with young fellows was when they got a uniform on them, they thought they were all it and they demanded everything. He said this, to be a school teacher, to be a policeman, to be a, blank, to, to be a banker, to be a minister, he says they're the four, five professional positions that people ought to earn respect, not demand. Because there is too many men in pulpits today and they demand respect rather than earn it. I didn't come to Kilkeel demand respect. I came to earn it. Obtaining God's favor is something, child of God, that can only be earned. And I want this morning for us to look at this text this morning. It is a lot to say. Because there's so much this morning in the life of Esther that teaches me valuable lessons. To obtain favor with God and to obtain God's favor. As I look at my text and the events unfolding around it, there must first of all be preparation. There must be preparation to obtain God's favor. Go back up to verse 12 just for a wee moment and we'll see this in the book of Esther. Esther chapter 2 verse 12. It says, And now when every maid's turn was come to go in to King Ahasuerus. Now look at this bit. After that she had been twelve months according to the manner of women, for so were the days of their purification accomplished to it, Six months with oil of myrrh and six months sweet odors and with other things for the purifying of the women. What's God trying to say to us in that verse? Do you know God spoke to me through that verse 12? Do you know what God showed me in verse 12? To achieve and for Esther to obtain the king's favor. It wasn't a flash in the pan achievement. There was no shortcuts for Esther in obtaining the king's favor. 
And child of God, if there's anything we need to learn this morning, and if there's anything we need to get a hold of this morning, listen, obtaining God's favor is not a flash in the pan achievement for us either. Did you notice, first of all, the, the period, 12 months? 12 months in preparing for this moment. 12 months was spent in preparation in order to obtain the king's favor. Just didn't come. She spent 12 months preparing herself. Some of you ladies would have loved that. Wasn't just half an hour in front of the mirror here. Twelve months. I want you to notice first of all the process. Verse twelve. Because in within those twelve months there was the first six months with the oil of myrrh. As she went in to get prepared to obtain the king's favor, six months Esther had to be bathed in the oil of myrrh. You see, the oil of myrrh has a great significance because myrrh means, it means bitter. Myrrh also means suffering. And if you go to the book of the Revelation, chapter 3 and verse 8, you'll find that the Lord Jesus was addressing a church called Smyrna. And Smyrna got its name, the same Greek word where there comes the word myrrh. And if you read the, the, what the Lord Jesus had to say concerning the church at Smyrna, it was a church that greatly suffered. And it was one out of the seven that the Lord Jesus could speak about with no condemnation. Six months, Esther was treated with the oil of myrrh in order to prepare her to obtain favor of the king. The oil of myrrh was used to draw out all impurities within the skin. Myrrh also speaks of death because you remember it was Nicodemus who brought the myrrh and it was one of the ointments used in the embalming of the Lord Jesus. Sometimes when bitter experiences comes into our lives, we look at them in a the wrong idea. Sometimes we look towards the bitter experiences of life with a wrong attitude. Sometimes we'll look at, ah, that's the devil giving me a hard time. Well, it, perhaps it is, but the Lord allowed it. And then others say, well, this is God's punishing me in some way. Maybe so, but here's the attitude we should ad adopt. Sometimes the bitter experiences that comes into our life is used to purge us of ourself, to purge us of the things of the flesh, to draw out the impurities and to remove the impurities that's in our lives. Unforgiving spirit, You know, child of God, there is so much impurity in my life. I don't know about yours, but I am speaking about my own. And God sometimes has to use the oil of myrrh, the better experiences, to draw out the impurities that's in my life. And that's in your life for the sole purpose to conform us into the image of God's own Son. Do you know, child of God, 
When we obtain favor in God, we really obtain favor with God. When these lives of ours begin to conform into the image of his Son. Those first six months in preparation with the oil of myrrh was to draw out all the impurities that was there that would have prevented Esther from obtaining favor in the sight of the king. You know, sometimes, child of God, God has to bring in and rub on the oil of, of myrrh using the bitter experiences of life. That's what he's doing. He's rubbing in the oil of myrrh to draw out all the impurities. That's what God wants in your life and mine this morning. He wants our lives rid of the impurities that prevents him from conforming, from conforming our lives into the image of His Son. 1 Peter 1 verse 7 says that the trial of your faith being much more precious than gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found worthy unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Muhammad Ali said this, the greatest pains he ever endured was never in a ring the greatest pains he had to overcome and endure was in the preparation for every fight. Muhammad Ali said, it was the pains of preparation that presented me as a champion. You see, it takes the painful things to take away the impurity. Look at the progress in verse 12 as well, because the last six months was with sweet odors and with other things for the purification of the women. It wasn't the other way around, child of God. Here's Esther this morning making preparation to obtain favor with the king. There must be not only preparation, there must be this morning priority. The text says this morning, and so Esther was taken unto the king, sorry, verse 17, and the king loved Esther above all the women, and she obtained grace and favor in his sight. Her priority was the king. Her priority wasn't self-esteem. Her priority was not self-importance. Her priority this morning wasn't self-glory. Her priority was the king this morning. The king. Esther's heart lay in the king. She didn't give two hoots about anybody else who looked at her. Friend, her priority was to please the king. Her priority was to obtain his favor. She didn't, she wasn't out to please anybody. She was out to please the king. And child of God, if you want to obtain, and if I want to obtain the favor of God, we have to forget what others think. There's too many in the day and they're out to seek to please themselves. And they're out to seek to please the people. I'm telling you, first and foremost, I'm out to obtain favor of the king. When she sought this morning the favor of the king, listen, nobody else mattered. John chapter 8, verse 29, the Lord Jesus says, I always do that which pleaseth the Father. Child of God, tell me this this morning. Are you living to please yourself? Are we living to please others? Or are we out to please the Lord? We're not out to please men. 
We're not out to please others. First and foremost, we're out to please the Lord. Obtaining God's favor. When you become a servant of Jesus Christ, whether that's a pastor, whether it's an evangelist, a missionary, your ministry will never be blessed if you're out to please the people. A servant of God's priority is first and foremost to please the Lord. Do you remember what Paul said? Paul said in Galatians 1 and 10, For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be a servant of Jesus Christ. The big problem in so many pulpits today, we've got men pleasers, people pleasers, and they'll not preach the truth for the sole purpose of pleasing others. We ought to be out this morning to obtain favor of God. Esther was out to obtain favor of the king. It meant preparation. It meant priority. Thirdly, and I'm finished, it meant purpose. Purpose. Because, you see, God had a purpose of her being there. And her purpose was greater than survival. And Esther's purpose was greater than self-interest. Esther's purpose was the salvation of her people. She was there on behalf of her people. Do you know why, child of God, the Lord didn't take you home to heaven the moment you believed? Because you are on this earth for a purpose. You and I are on the face of this earth. You and I are in this dark, evil world. In this year, 2016, you and I are here for such a time as this. Why? To tell others of Christ. To tell others of Him. Esther certainly wasn't content when she learned she was queen. She wasn't just content when the crown was on her head. She wasn't content because she knew that her people were about to perish. You content this morning, child of God, am I? When it comes to obtaining favor of God, it's not with the attitude, what's in it for me? When it comes to obtaining favor of God, it's obeying God what He wants you to do without asking what your salary is going to be or what your pension is going to be. Too many boys are asking questions before they go into the work. Am I getting the car? I need this. I need that. I need the other thing. And I'm not saying this, friends, to put myself up. God forbid that. But the oversight of this fellowship knows that when the call of God came for me to come, I never demanded one thing as far as money and all was concerned. It wasn't even talked about. And that's the way it should be. A 
Ah, child of God, you know. Obtaining God's favor just doesn't come in a flash in the pan moment. But that's every goal that every believer should be aiming for this morning. Every believer. It's every believer's goal. It's not just a goal for the man on the pulpit. It's for every believer's goal to strive and to obtain favor of the Lord. And to hear when the day comes, well done. Good and faithful servant. And so Esther, she obtained grace and favor in his sight. Are we obtaining God's favor? There's preparation involved. There's priority involved. There's purpose involved. And the key preparation is this. Trust and obey. May God bless his word to our hearts this morning. May we strive this morning to obtain God's favor. His alone.